Welcome back. We were talking about uh, nonlinear devices and nonlinearity, how it affects. And in that discussion in the last period, we have seen uh, it generates uh, intermodulation products. And uh, we were trying to understand the intermodulation product and some manufacturers how they define the intermodulation product in terms of C by third order intermodulation product, C by 3 I m. But that intermodulation product C by 3 I m is only for two carriers they define. Now, when what happens when it is multiple carrier? What is the term they use? They use a term called noise power ratio. This is for multiple carriers that is greater than 2 and this NPR is defined as noise power density. Uh, that noise power which is generated due to multiple uh, carriers is going to fall at one place. So, that is called desired bandwidth. So, it is noise power density outside desired bandwidth divided by noise power density within said bandwidth. It is very simple. Uh, let us say over this band uh, the uh, our uh, operation is going on many carriers are placed and a particular area in this area we want to see what is the effect of other carriers falling into this. Here is my interest. So, here is my uh, actual operating carrier on that how much noise is falling over this. So, uh, so noise power density outside this and uh, noise power density which is falling into this that will that will fall initially there is a noise power density and it will increase because of this intermodulation. So, it is a measure people do measurement uh, using notch filter and noise generator and but I just wanted to mm, tell you that there is another term uh, which is NPR. So, we have come across two terms C by 3 I m and NPR noise power ratio. This is defined for two carrier operation or characteristics of the nonlinear device with two carrier operation. This defines the characteristics of the uh, device or system with more than two carriers multiple carrier operation that is only there. Now, uh, the mean is meaning is that if NPR is higher then linearity is better or linearity is poor it is linearity is better because when this is higher this noise power density within the desired band is low then only this becomes higher. So, noise power density within the desired band becomes low when the intermodulation of others are not falling here. That means, system is operating in most that most of the thing most of them are in linear region nonlinearity can generate the intermod. So, there is no nonlinearity or less nonlinearity. So, it is much better linearity is much better this much is enough for the definition. Now, there is one more uh, thing that uh, uh, people come across that is called passive intermod product. This is uh, not by active device when there is a metal to metal contact like in connector cable input to the antenna etcetera uh, due to corrosion oxidation contamination 
that Rf intermod is generated because of these things it creates a nonlinearity in the in the metal or the um, or the conductor which is uh, which is carrying the Rf. So, since there is a nonlinearity that intermod is generated this is called passive intermodulation product. So, in case of high power antenna this um, with higher power that also affects, but this cannot be modeled so easily since it is a random phenomena, but this can be uh, this has to be taken into account uh, during the system design. So, we will go into further into this uh, nonlinearity. let us look a little more further into it what is the other effect we have seen P i versus P out that is in d b m or d b w normally it is in d b m and we have seen this goes as a linear curve and then it saturates and there is a definition of a 1 d b compression point and a third order intermod which gets generated and that also saturates and its extension goes to a point which we call intercept point i p and this is 1 d b compression point in terms of input and output it can be defined. Now, there is a noise below this. So, actual operation for linear range of operation we can do just we can assume 1 d b is very small compared to the total range on which we can operate. So, if this one in terms of output this is our linear dynamic range. This is the linear fundamental uh, uh, power curve p omega 1. So, this is the linear dynamic range. So, this is p 1 d b minus this is the noise floor which is noise noise power. Hmm. So, uh, L d r linear dynamic range in d b is o 1 d b that is output uh, 1 d b compression point minus noise noise power. So, that is that is the linear dynamic range, but though it is linear dynamic range our spurious starts coming in this is the third order inter, uh, intermod product this is the third order intermod product p uh, uh, 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 or p 2 omega 2 minus omega 1 one of them we take. Now, this starts growing above the noise level at this point. So, therefore, we can see that below this point below this point that the spurious noise which is supposed to be the third order intermod that has not come spurious noise started coming from here hmm. as we go more input spurious noise starts coming here. So, this dynamic range this one we can call spurious free dynamic range. I can color it this one is spurious free dynamic range where the spurious is started coming in just that point to the linear dynamic range point and this is the linear dynamic range from the output point of view. Same thing can be said in terms of input point since we are talking about the amplifier it is the output spurious free dynamic range. The, so, spurious free dynamic range is p omega 1 by 2 uh, sorry by p 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 at 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 when it becomes n 0. So, from n 0 this is given in ratio it can be put into d b also let us try to calculate how uh, uh, in terms of 
our uh, intercept point because that is the specification. So, SFDR is equal to P omega 1 by P 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and P 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 we have seen it is P omega 1 uh, cube by O i P 3 square output intercept point square. So, therefore, I can write P omega 1 is equal to O i P 3 square into P 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 and to the power 1 third because this was cube sorry 1 third because this was cube. So, P omega 1 now this P omega 1 we can substitute here. So, we can get S f d r is equal to O i P 3 square multiplied by P 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 to the power uh, to the power one third by o, uh, by um, p two omega one minus omega two p two omega one minus omega two so p omega one I replaced here and uh, by readjusting this we can get it is equal to O i p 3 by 2 uh, by p 2 omega 1 minus omega 2 2 third. This is in ratio. So, in d b s f d r in d b we can write 2 third of O i p 3 minus p 2 omega 1 minus omega 2. Now, uh, this is the definition of the spurious free dynamic range in terms of O i p 3, but uh, you know it is not only the dynamic range. Uh, at the lower side this is the noise hmm. and so therefore, when this becomes the noise power, so it is two third of O i p 3 minus n 0. But many of the devices and systems they would not work until a particular SNR is achieved. After that minimum SNR they will start functioning. So, the dynamic range should have been defined that with when I consider the SNR SFDR in dB will be two third of O i p 3 minus n naught minus signal to noise ratio. That is the minimum uh, minimum signal to noise ratio with which should operate. So, with that this can be expressed in this form. Now, uh, let us uh, do some uh, quick uh, calculation. One one thing I, I missed. Uh, let let me explain that. Let me explain. This is very this is very important. This uh, curve, that is, we have linear dynamic range, and we have spurious free dynamic range. We may consider the SNR. We may not, uh, depending on the requirement. Now, really, my spurious free operating point is this this region started getting into spurious and nonlinearity. So, if we want to offer avoid the nonlinearity as well as the spurious how much back off we should go. So, uh, we have talked about the back off that is input when it is getting into saturation 1 dB compression point from there if I reduce the input it is called input back off. Similarly, from the 1 dB compression point it will come down as a output back off. So, for spurious free operation one is uh, nonlinear operation for spurious free operation how much back off this this minus this. So, for spurious free operation this O B O will be this much for spurious free operation this, this is another interesting idea. 
So, let us take a quick example um, for a receiver. Uh, let some data is given noise figure is 7 dB, 1 dB compression point uh, is 25 dBm and uh, let us say it is uh, um, output reference and uh, gain is 40 dB that um, output intercept uh, third order intercept point is 35 dBm. That receiver is receiving a input and it has a, um, a antenna in front of it. So, that temperature of from the antenna it is receiving 150 K. It has a bandwidth of 100 megahertz. Now, can we find that linear dynamic range, spurious free dynamic range. So, what we have to find out that if you remember spurious free dynamic range and linear dynamic range, we have to find out what is the noise because o, o p 1 d b output uh, 1 d b compression point minus noise power. So, noise power has to be calculated. So, for noise power we have been given some information. Let us see what is noise power. If you recollect it is g into k into the bandwidth uh, and then uh, it is multiplied by f minus 1 in case of we can say noise figure noise factor minus 1 because f is given in noise figure is given in dB will convert into ratio and uh, multiplied by the temperature normal temperature. T 0 which is 290. Hmm. So, if you put these numbers uh, the gain is 40 dB. So, it is 10 to the power 4. I am converting all dB into lin uh, linear ratio uh, and then k value is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 23 if you recollect. Then the bandwidth is 10 to the power 8 and then uh, we have this multiplied by Mm, 150 that is uh, antenna noise temperature and uh, that 7 dB noise figure uh, you convert into ratio it becomes 5 f minus 1 and this multiplied by 290. So, this multiplied by this and uh, when you calculate it comes out to be 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt it is minus 47.4 dBm. Do your own calculation, do not just do not copy my <laughs> numbers what I have done. So, the LDR value will become P 1 dB compression point minus N 0 in dB now um, is 25 um, which is given 25 dBm and this is also in dBm. You have to remember to convert if this is in dBm, this also has to be dBm. Uh, if this is in dBw, convert into dBw. So, both of them uh, should be same. Uh, this minus minus 47.4 and that becomes 72.4 dB and then uh, the SFDR value is two third of P 3 minus N 0 and uh, that is uh, you have the P 3 supplied that O y P 3 is 35 dBm, N 0 is already obtained and two third of that you get in uh, dB uh, 54.9 dB. Now, if I uh, ask you I mean th this question uh, I extend that find out that output back of spurious free condition. Hmm. So, then as we have seen that it is L d r that is output back off uh, will be is equal to L d r minus S f d r uh, that is 72 minus 
which is 17.1 dB. Now, uh, this, uh, this is just an example uh, for you to work out, similar example we will try to give in assignment. So, uh, let us see that uh, uh, three effects we have seen that is we have seen that uh, power in to power out in dB the curve goes like this linear and then non-linear. So, this one is termed as A m to A m conversion. Similarly, we have seen there is a gain compression if there is a gain this side and power in this side uh, initially there is a constant gain then gain will start falling when uh, 1 dB compression point coming and beyond that. But this is on amplitude there is one more effect that happens that is in phase. So, input phase to output phase if I take the difference and call it delta phi that is phase input to output phase that is delta phi and if we input we increase then it is constant and then the difference increases. Now, this is called A m to P m conversion. Now, these are the causes of nonlinearity. In briefly, that amplitude gets nonlinear, gain gets compressed, is called gain compression. AM to AM conversion and AM to PM conversion takes place. Now, because of that, um, there is uh, the uh, effects are. Uh, uh, if I draw a spectrum initially the spectrum may look like this due to our filtering it will be like this. This is the um, spectrum. Now, due to intermodulation the spurious gets generated and uh, the new spectrum the spurious will be spread at different frequencies. So, new spectrum will be enhanced. So, this is enhanced and it spreads further a amplitude spreads further. So, if your operation area is this and the adjacent channel is coming you are interfering. So, spectrum Reading uh, generates that adjacent channel interference. This is the effect of spectrum spreading. This is one of the uh, one of the serious uh, things that happens uh, due to intermod. One is the intermodulation product uh, generates the spurious within the channel, so that your signal to noise ratio or dynamic range reduces. Another is spread the spectrum, so that it interferes in the uh, adjacent channel. Adjacent channel interference increases. There is one more problem because of the phase nonlinearity. Let us see our nowadays our operation in uh, in uh, this uh, recent days communication are mostly phase modulation, BPSK, QPSK, the uh, phase shift keying modulation. Now let us try to draw a constellation diagram of a QAM. This is I Q channel. A 16 quam constellation diagram is like this. These are nothing but the vector points. So, uh, the decision boundary for at the receiver 
to identify where the vector is and decide that which bit it should be. Each of these vector point represent a particular symbol. So, in case of Coam, this will be 4 bit symbol. Let us say this is 0 1 0 1, uh, this is uh, 0 1 1 1, uh, like that. Mm. They each of them represent a, a symbol which is a, a, a which is a combination of a couple of bits. Now, if this is detected properly, if this detection can takes place uh, within a decision boundary. So, we can call that mm, this decision boundary is uh, in this square. Now, this vector may get into uh, different type of noise. So, it is vector location in amplitude as well as in phase it will be varying. So, in terms of phase when it varies it may move in this direction or in this direction. So, because of our nonlinearity, as we said that the phase may change. Mm. So, this vector will change this direction and this direction and similarly mm, there is a possibility that due to uh, Gaussian noise uh, there will be the vector may be anywhere in this location. So, so because of the phase nonlinearity the system may change the constellation may change and your vector will go into the other decision level and so that it will be wrong decision is taken. So, this is let us say decision boundary for this, this particular vector a decision boundary. Now, if it changes more than the decision boundary then it will be detected as a wrong symbol. This symbol let us say it was 0 1 0 1 and this symbol is 0 1 1 0 and so this will be detected wrongly when it crosses this. Now, this is another effect of uh, I mean a, a little more explanation of the constellation and tilt due to uh, introduction and this increases the BER. Now, uh, one quick thing is the mitigation is very simple that is if you have uh, you have a nonlinearity like this. So, you pre distort the signal pre distort the signal like this. So, effectively you get a linear ring. This is pre distortion, this is the actual and this is the resultant. It at the transmit side it is done by pre distortion of the signal. So, that when it passes through actual nonlinear, you introduce a nonlinearity, passes through other way nonlinearity, you get a resultant linear. And in the receive side, it is done by equalization. This is very brief idea of the mitigation of the nonlinear system. So, till now, what we have uh, covered is the definition of uh, some terms and uh, then. Uh, we have in the definition of terms we have come across 1 dB compression point, third order intercept point um, C by 3 I m then N P R. Then we have tried to estimate their values uh, individually uh, in the device or subsystem and in a cascaded subsystem. Then we tried to show you what is the effect of nonlinearity in terms of gain compression and dynamic range reduction and then we have very briefly touched how the mitigation is done that is by uh, linearizer or equalizer. So, with this uh, we have uh, covered briefly the nonlinearity aspect of the mm, devices and subsystem we come across in the satellite communication. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, topic.